So what questions did you want to talk today? Um, well, my, my, uh, my questions had to do, had, have to do with a topic that's difficult for me to talk about, but it is the reason why I called in. Um, I am, uh, I'm, I'm a recovering heroin addict okay. and, uh, I'm, I'm still dealing with being on methadone mm -hmm. and <clears throat> things like, uh, that. Okay. So I'm, I'm in the process of creating myself out of this, huh? you know, position. How, how long you been sober now? Um, well, sober from, I mean, I'm still on methadone. So some people would say I'm not sober. No, that's but, just, uh, how long have you been off of heroin? Um, I had a relapse one year ago. Um, so before that was a couple of years, but, but now it's been a year and four months. Okay. Months. So each time you have a relapse, it's because you've allowed your frequency to lower enough and some form of ghosts have been reattracted to you. 80% of all relapses in heroin and heroin addicts are ghosts. Now I deal, I deal a lot with addiction, addiction recovery people, a, a tremendous amount of my private sessions are that from every walk of life, from the highest to the highest to the lowest of lowest. And what you were talking about, recreating yourself. You have to understand it still comes back to your first choice to use drugs in that format. There is where the most amount of, let's just say, rips in your time frequency will exist. So for the audience sake and for teacher's sake, um, because there are many people here that this that this can go out to and thank you for calling in and have the courage to to say what you're going through. So the first thing to understand here is what you chose to do and why. So how old were you when you first started? I had to have been about. Um, it was after high school, but before I turned 21, so probably 19, maybe maybe yeah. 20. That was your first round of heroin? No, I started with prescription pills and uh, I guess ended up moving to heroin for financial reasons. So you went from Oxycontin style to heroin? Yes. Okay. And then when you went to go get off, how bad were the withdrawals? Um, they were, they're, they're, you know, this is the most horrible thing I've ever experienced <laughs> uh, physically and, you know, emotionally and mentally. It's, it's, um, it's intense. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? So about, about the withdrawals, they were very intense. And then after the withdrawal, yes. you've been now been off, off that and then they put you on methadone. So how long yeah, can you well, be? I had well, I actually was, um, I actually got on methadone my first time around. I switched from those to methadone and then quit methadone cold turkey somehow, which is like 30 days of withdrawal. And then uh, years later, uh, I relapsed and now I'm back in this methadone situation again. You, you relapse because you never healed the original trauma, the original wound, as well as each time you've had to go through withdrawals, you've, you've doubled up and made new wounds inside the physical body itself and as well as the dreaming body. There are rips and tears in the dreaming uh, frequency. So inside the Living the Mystical Life Daily Course that you went to inside your book is a dream world clearing meditation. And then the universal yeah. meditation, galactic time, you need to fix the rips in time. So every time you've done heroin, you've had blackout moments. Okay. Yeah. Moments where you give away all of your sovereign power and whatever's around you can do whatever it wants to do through your body as a psychic instrument of experience. And that is another form of trauma that needs to be healed through regular ceremonies of self healing and self nurturing. So one of the most um, instrumental tools for you will be flotation tanks. Do you remember me talking about them at the event? Yes, I do. Have you done yeah. it? I, I I visited one um, uh, prior to the event once. Okay. So you really need to do like 10 in a row, like four in a okay. week, four in another week, 
in two in the last week, and then you take five, six weeks off to see what it does for you. First thing first, you're floating in 800 pounds of salt and 200 gallons of water. Your brain literally runs yeah. out of off of magnesium and you're floating in magnesium sulfate, which your body's immediately converting. So you're adding cranial fluid, you're, you're re recharging your, your, your chemical body. Now, many, many float centers offer a massage before you go in. I very much advise that, especially if they have a cranial sacral person that can realign your spine and you go and float. For anyone that's in a drug recovery scenario and its withdrawals are going to be one of those things, if you have access to a flotation tank, you can really, really, really ease off some of that horrid pressure you've talked about. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. That's, and the next thing you understand yeah, okay. is state your body is still damaged. And it's that damage that creates a weakness that allows other things as external projections at you to come and get off the bandwagon and go and reuse again. And you don't want to re reuse. That's where you're at. No. But you don't want to get off all of the drugs. Well, that's still a ways away. Okay? You need to yeah. create a, okay. rest, a recipe of wellness for you. And that comes into balancing all of the things that you did while you're on the drugs that you can remember. And all the things that you don't remember have to be put to rest. And that's your dreaming frequency that was severely abused by the drug itself because the drug itself has a curse on it. All of the criminal energy that's involved to get that drug to you is a cursed energy. So you need to see the spiritual side of what that drug is and begin to break contracts, vows, and agreements with it. Think of all of the, the social situations you were in where you were using or not using and how what it created and the, and the disasters it created within your life. And those are your trials and tribulations that you're giving as testimony to your ancestors to not use this drug. So it passes to the future generations. It is your own prayer and testimonial. So your whole voice is heard as a victory ceremony in the guidance of yourself. Yeah. Okay? You've got to truly empower yourself to the next level and then begin to do the healing. Have you done any internal colon cleansing? No, I have not. That's, uh, that's something that's, I, I know have, that I need to do. You actually have trace elements of, of all, all the forms of drugs still, still within your intestinal tract right now. This is the other wow. reason okay. everyone who's an addict redoes it because they still have something left in that's trapped in mucus that the body will seek out and find. So you need to do a full on colon cleanse with parasites. So well, there's one thing about Oxycontin versus heroin. So when you're taking large volumes of Oxycontin, it actually binds up your feces super, super strong. Even if you're snort, snorting and you're smoking and you're swallowing, whatever it does, it still does that. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Some this amount of heavily petrified and bound feces in all forms of your intestines. So you're looking at a minimum of six to 10 colonics to get a, you know, let's say a 60% chunk of it out of there so that your, your liver can let down, your kidneys can let down and your gallbladder because they're all blocked up too. That is the other reason why you okay. sick repeat. If you truly take the attack on the parasites, yeah, because parasites, well, as soon as you start doing heroin, your whole, your whole immune system changes in its response level, and you become very prone to intestinal parasites. So I would, I would say okay. that 10% of all the food you eat right now, you don't actually get to use any of the energy because the parasites are using it inside your intestinal Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Whatever budget you have, it's colon cleansing and flotation tanks. Okay. okay. Serious. Now, there are there are ways to 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 make this effective for yourself, and this is your best bang for your buck here. Now, because you're on methadone and you're you're still in that situation, it's going to be a while. If you are able to do the, these colon cleansing and the flotation tanks all in a very short period of time, let's say a month, you can get all that done. Yeah. You can begin some, some of your choice points of other stimuli that may cause, let's say, relapse because you got to look at your friends, your family, and then why you, you can always know where to get it. Your brain is always wired to know where to get it. You got yeah, yeah. to begin to dewire your brain to try to get the psyche. So that's interesting. Something like the course. 
I am, I'm losing you. <clears throat> I can't hear you anymore. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. So what I was saying is you've got to retune the psychic side of your brain that is looking for always knowing where the drugs are so that you can begin using the course as the psychic focus. Okay. All right. Too much of my, I'm too, okay. Learning to retrain yourself. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The daily yeah. practice is what will ultimately beat being a junkie. And that's something you don't ever want labeled to you, do you? God, no. That's something uh -huh. I'm trying to, yeah. I want to get rid of that. In, in my years of doing this, I, I've, I've, I developed um, the system that I talked about at the event for specifically for people that were going through drug withdrawals. Now, I, know I offer this as a service for, for those people who are really on track with wanting to truly change their life because I get a lot of people coming to me they just want to go through the system my answer is no you have to be on track with doing it because I create results and you are the the product of those results and if you're really serious you really want to to go through a healing state it's understanding that that first step you take has to be a potent and powerful step and that last step you take is the most potent and powerful step that you can take in this interim time frame where you're recalibrating the body, understanding what the soul's trying to do with it, and what the external drug you did actually did to you. So you can begin to remove the yeah. trauma that are in your tissue. That's why yeah. having massage before the fourth tank, you can begin to get the soft tissue release. If there is no soft tissue release, the trauma is there. And that's why so many people go out and have psychic healings and this and that, and the trauma keeps coming back and back and back because it's retained. Retained actually in the fascia. Okay. By your this is great information. By your fourth cranial sacral session, you should have what's called a full on unwind, where when the cranial person is moving your head in a small semicircle, and all of a sudden your whole, whole body, all your muscles begin to let down in a spiral pattern, and people start to shake and wither, and some people stand up because all of a sudden what has been tight for a decade is suddenly loose. And there's this burst of energy that goes through their body. A release oh, wow. of electricity. Yes. That has been bound up in these in these 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 fascia pieces that are so wound so tight that they're under heavy tension. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. in most cases, in most cases, when you're dealing with, let's say, the the heroin. When you are going through your withdrawals, it, you, you must understand the damage that is doing from the continuous vomiting, the mental depression that it's going, doing to your fascia. Okay, okay. It is done, it, I can't even begin to describe the, the, the level each, down, each time you're going through that. It does to you. Other reason, you do not do the soft tissue, you will continuously have those, those moments where they will, the fascia will release a... a a reminder of withdrawal and the body will begin to literally salivate for it again. Yeah, yeah. Right. Those you triggers, get triggers like triggers it. Yeah. And you got to remove the ability to have triggers. That's where doing the spiritual work of cleaning the colon, doing the flotation tanks, and then beginning to do the ceremonial work that breaks contract files and agreements that uses the consciousness strike. Oh, it's great to have this information.